If you watch this channel, it's more than likely that you have an interest in animals and wildlife. I also share these interests, which is why I watch a lot of wildlife videos on YouTube. This is usually a positive experience, but recently I've been recommended videos and channels that really shouldn't be on YouTube, and shouldn't be on any other video sharing site. I am talking about live feeding videos, and if you're lucky enough not to have heard of these videos before, I will explain them now very briefly. It usually involves feeding small animals such as ducks, mice and rabbits, to predators such as caiman, snakes and frogs. In some cases, animals are set up to fight each other, and it's clear that these videos are intended to shock the viewer. Before we get any further into the video, I'd like to make it clear that I'm not against all live feeding, because there is a difference between feeding insects to fish and feeding rabbits to caiman. Even though some small creatures such as insects and worms are capable of feeding some basic emotions, they're nowhere near as complex as larger animals such as rabbits and birds. You'd think that YouTube would ban animal abuse content such as these live feeding videos, and if they were following their own rules, they would. Under their violent and graphic content policies, they do not allow content in which humans coerce animals to fight, content in which a human maliciously mistreats an animal and causes it to experience distress outside of traditional or standard practices, content in which a human unnecessarily keeps an animal in poor conditions outside of traditional or standard practices, content that glorifies or promotes serious neglect, mistreatment, or harm towards other animals, content that shows an animal rescue that is staged and puts the animal in harmful scenarios, and finally graphic content that features animals and intends to shock or disgust. These live feeding videos tick all but one of these categories, and I'll quickly go through each of them now. The first one is probably the easiest to prove, because some of these channels set up arenas for animals to fight. In some cases the animals can't fight back, such as when a rabbit's fed to a caiman, but the animals that can fight back will. You have some channels putting snakes against frogs, hornets against frogs, frogs against frogs, and even young crocodiles against frogs. In each one of these videos at least one of the animals suffers, and you slowly see the life leave their eyes. This is blatantly coercing the animals to fight, and some channels are clueless enough to put verses or fight to the death in the title. That's a tick for the first policy, so now we will move on to the second one. Most of the animals in these videos are maliciously mistreated, and are often put in certain situations to get the perfect thumbnail. In a lot of these videos, a large number of animals are put in with one predator, and this means they must witness their own kind being eaten in front of them. This of course means that they're terrified, and they often cower in the corner. These videos are just made for shock value, and there's no care put towards the animal that they are feeding to their predator. This is yet again another tick, and we can move on to the third policy. Most of these animals are seen as tools to make money on YouTube, and they're often put in glass boxes where it's easy to film them. A lot of these channels show little to no care towards their animals, because in some cases they will sacrifice them to another predator in fighting videos. As well as this, they will often encourage their animals to cannibalize each other, and this really does show that there's little care shown to these animals. But with yet another tick, we'll move on to the fourth policy, and this is another easy one to prove. As you might be able to notice from some of the thumbnails of these videos, a lot of the animals that are being fed to the predator were meant to be sold as pets. There are certain pet breeds of rabbits, and also guinea pigs too. I'm sure the pet shops would not want you to use these animals in this way, and in most cases they're just seen as a tool to make money, and are often held in certain situations to get more shock value. By forcing animals to fight, you are clearly neglecting them and mistreating them, and you should not be allowed to keep animals at all. That's clearly another tick. But next, finally, we have a policy that these videos do not violate. From what I've seen so far, they don't stage an animal rescue, and instead just feed animals to other animals in enclosed spaces. So that's the only cross on this list. And finally, we come to the easiest one to prove. All of these videos are graphic, and just from their thumbnails, you can see that they intend to shock or disgust people. This is exactly how they get their views, and to make more money, they have to be ever more shocking and disgusting. This clearly proves that these videos do not have a place on YouTube, yet they're on here and they are thriving. For our next segment, we'll move on to the excuses that some people try to use, and I'm sure some people are putting in the comments. One excuse that I see almost everywhere is that it's natural. These feedings couldn't be any less natural, because not only will most of these creatures not even meet in the wild, but they are also in an enclosed space, with virtually no way of escaping. Caiman do not meet pet rabbits in the wild, and Pac-Man frogs do not hunt octopuses. Yes, animals eating other animals is natural, but in the wild there is normally a hunt, or at least a chance of escape. 
Another excuse is that the animal won't eat dead prey, and in some very rare cases, this is the only valid excuse. Most reptiles and amphibians will take dead prey, but in most cases the dead prey will need to be manipulated. This is where you wiggle or move the prey animal, and this convinces the reptile that it's alive and it will then eat it. In most reptile keeping communities, live feeding is frowned upon, and should only be used as a last resort. Live feeding of predators such as snakes should only be used when the snake is going to starve, simply because it won't accept dead prey. These instances are very rare, and when they do occur, you don't need to film it and put it on YouTube for shock value. This excuse does not apply to 99.9% .9 of the live feeding videos out there, and is often used by channels that just want to keep abusing animals for money. The final and most laughable excuse is that it's educational content, because there's simply very little you can learn from these videos. If you talk to anyone who makes educational content on YouTube, they'll tell you that most videos take hours if not days of research. It's laughable that these live feeding videos mark themselves as educational, as they often don't include a voiceover, and are just a few minutes of an animal devouring another animal. Some of these channels even like to put documentary in their title or description, even if it's on a video that's only a few seconds long. In other cases, they'll try and create titles that sound educational, but are simply just a way of getting around the system. Some of these include How Fast Can a Monitor Lizard Eat Eight Hamsters? and Venomous Centipede Meets the Hamster Science Education Live Feeding. All of these videos seem to have no educational content whatsoever, and are only putting these things in their title to try and get around the system. But now we move on to why YouTube should really pay more attention towards these videos. You could argue that the moderators simply haven't seen these videos, but if you look at the subscriber count and views on these videos, it's more than likely that plenty of people have reported these videos and then YouTube has given them the green light. This not only is very irresponsible, but could come back to cause more problems in the future. Of course me making this video will have no effect whatsoever, but one of the things that has made YouTube change in the past are advertisers. As some of you might have already worked out, if you make animal related content. You often have animal related adverts on your videos. This often comes in the form of animal care companies or pet food companies. The original adpocalypse happened because adverts were being put on risky videos, and I'm pretty sure animal care companies will not want their adverts put on these live feeding videos. If there's an advert for rabbit food on a video where a rabbit is fed to a caiman, I'm sure if the company found out they would not be very happy with YouTube, and might even pull ads from the website. I'm pretty sure most other respectable companies would also not want their adverts on these videos, whether they're related to animals or not. This is one of the few things that would get YouTube to stamp out these channels, but they also need to think about who's watching these videos. If you're one of the people that watches these live feeding videos religiously, it's more than likely that you like witnessing animal abuse. If you witness it, you're more likely to do it yourself, and there's a scary correlation between people who abuse animals and people who go on to commit more serious crimes. This was seen very clearly in the documentary Don't F With Cats, where someone first started posting videos of animals getting abused, and then went on to murder somebody. In these abuse videos, he was feeding cats to snakes, and you have to think if any of these live feeding videos included cats, they would be taken down immediately. I'm not trying to say that everyone who watches these videos is going to go on to be a murderer, but I'm sure YouTube doesn't want their site to be a host to animal abuse content. But perhaps the main reason as to why YouTube should try and stop these videos is that they're directly paying for them. By monetizing these videos, YouTube is essentially paying for these animal abuse videos, and is also paying for them to be more extreme. On YouTube, the more views you get, the more money you get, and this incentivizes many creators to make better videos and recreate their best videos. In the live feeding videos niche, the more shocking videos get more views. This incentivizes creators to make more shocking videos and add more and more animals each time. This in turn makes the abuse worse, and it's all funded by YouTube and advertisers. Those of you who watch this channel will know I never make videos like this, but I was simply so angry and disappointed that these videos exist on a platform that I create on. I don't think this video will get enough attention to make any difference, but I have linked a petition that wants to ban life feeding animal videos on YouTube, and it only needs a few hundred more signatures. But if you're as angry as me and you really want to get the message to YouTube, one of the few ways is to get the message to a large creator with a voice. If this message is shouted at YouTube loud enough, they won't be able to ignore it. And then finally, something might be done. I'm sorry this video turned into a bit of a rant, but I'm sure many of you feel the same. And I will be back to my normal videos later on in the week. So until then, goodbye.